Good day, fellow members of the legislature. I come to you to speak today on the institution of slavery. I come to you as a, a true man of the South and as a true Kentuckian. My brothers of the South, I wish to speak to the heirs of your ways. It is time for Kentucky to do what is best for Kentucky. Slavery is fading away, and Kentucky must not fade away with it. Slavery does not rest within our founding nation, our founding principles, and it is inconsistent with the language of the Declaration of Independence, which founded our nation. <clears throat> Yet we, we've made it stronger than ever, especially with our recent manumission law enacted March 3, 1860. The Declaration of Independence set a precedent in our nation that all men have the right to, live, to life, liberty, and pursue happiness. We have not lived up to these principles, and the manumission law has further allowed pro-slavery men to unjustly erode these principles from our founding. But it is not too late. Kentucky needs to push for gradual emancipation, pro-union legislation, and reforming the Manumission Act immediately. Like the northern states have done in recent past, Kentucky too should push for gradual and start for gradual emancipation. States like New York and Rhode Island who have had large slave populations <clears throat> successfully freed their slaves and managed to become free states while doing so. Not only is slavery to be more not only is slave, slavery morally wrong, it is unfit for our Republican government. And also it is becoming less important in our society today. It is unjust and we self evidently know this because of the Declaration of Independence. Frederick Douglass, a former slave and now a free man, spoke about the Declaration of Independence and what it meant to the Negro race. Douglass is a man that can shatter the position of the pro-slavery men. He's a man that endured the miseries of slavery, saw and felt the, treacherous, the treacheries of what slaveholding men do to their slaves. Now he is an intelligent man fighting for his race and has been made ignorant fighting for his race because the slaves have been made ignorant of their self-evident freedom and natural rights. The position of pro-slavery men states that Negro, the Negro race is naturally inferior and that enslaving them is a service, is doing them a service. The slaves are well provided for, according to the pro-slavery men, and, and um, subordination is their natural place, according to them. Douglas crushes this position. He has become a free man, earned an education mostly on his own, learned to read like any other white boy would learn, and became a respectable figure in politics among all races. He crushes their position because he is not inferior. He is an intelligent superior to most in the North. He has learned to read on his own and has crushed the pro-slavery position. Um, Douglas states that they're only inferior because white men have made them inferior. It is not their natural place. He believes that a slave is a man and it is confirmed. He believes that a state, that a slave is a man and it is confirmed by the laws of the United States. Yet the meaning of the 4th of July to him only brings him pain and sorrow. The government has not upheld the principles stated in the Declaration of Independence and it, is not, and it has not carried out the will of the Founding Fathers. The Negro race has shown to be equal to the white race. In the North, where black men are free and are able to work for the fruits of their own labor, they have become doctors, lawyers, ministers, priests, merchants, etc. They have become accustomed to our ways, the white ways, and have shown that they can do this and provide for their own self and gain an education, earn a, earn a job because they are smart enough and are capable of this. They have proven to work the same jobs as white men for years now and have proven this in a free market industrialized society. <clears throat> their capacities for learning and working are the same as the white men. Kentucky must not seek to leave the Union. The Union holds our constitutional rights 
that protect our property, including slaves. If we were to leave the Union, there would be nothing to protect Kentuckians' property. We would have no federal aid to support our state. The Constitution and the Union enforce the Fugitive Slave Act, which will protect the rights of the slaveholders. If Kentucky were to leave the Union, the Fugitive, Aid Slack, the Fugitive Slave Act would not apply to our borders. And this could lead to northern abolitionists attempting to raid our, our cities, our towns, trying to start or initiate some sort of slave insurrection. And that is not what Kentucky needs. We must be loyal to the Union. For they hold our constitutional rights that will protect our, our citizens of Kentucky. We must ensure the life, liberty, and property of all our people. We must allow Kentuckians to do what they wish with their property, which leads to the heirs of the Manumission Act. The Manumission Act of March 1860 states that no slave shall be freed unless the master provides a written covenant approved by the court, which also removes the former slave from Kentucky within 90 days doing so, approving of uh, that covenant. That makes it extremely difficult for the slaves to be freed by their masters. It, the masters, their, the slaves are the master's property. They should be allowed to do what they want with them. Slaves are property, and property is secured by the constitutional law. <clears throat> everyone has the right to property, and everyone has the right to do what they want with their property. This is approved by the Constitution, and it needs to be reiterated. The uh, Section 1 of the Manumission Act is just an attempt for pro-slavery men to ensure their own private and selfish interests. Slavery works for their, their society because it, it increases their economic status, increases their wealth. Slaves are treated as livestock, subhuman as you will, and our property is simple enough. They are property. If slaves are treated as such, then why can't they not be free if their masters wish them to be free? Masters own their slaves like they would own simple livestock, such as a cow, pig. They should be able to free their slaves if they want to, for they could do what they wanted with a cow or a pig. They have the constitutional right, constitutional right to do so. Therefore, no state regulation um, should interfere with this simple process and their simple constitutional given rights. Once the people begin to lose their rights or they have their rights interfered with, as the Manumission Act um, does interfere with these rights, there is need for concern. This is why I wish to reform the Manumission Act. Section 1 interferes and almost makes it nearly impossible for masters to free their own slaves. Time is, has to be taken to assess damages and pay attorneys compensation for their casework on the suit that could be necessary if the state feels the um, slave has damaged the property that they are no longer given to live in because they are, have to be removed from the state. This is simply unnecessary and unjustified. I would like to enact a bill that will allow masters to free slaves, that is to say that people will be given their constitutional rights returned to them. There will be no interferences and no difficult procedures to allow a simple process of making a slave a free man. Masters will not have to remove their, their slaves from Kentucky, they can keep them there, and they will be freed within Kentucky. This will spark a gradual emancipation movement and move Kentucky towards a brighter future. The legislation I wish to enact follows. Any person holding, owning slaves has the right to emancipate their slaves within the state of Kentucky as long as a covenant is provided to the court and this covenant shall list the name, age, color, height, and weight of that person. Thank you. That is all I have today.